looking at my uh, new Lily uh, wood burning stove I bought yesterday. Um, wanted to uh, try to build an outdoor boiler this year uh, to put over there at the back of the house. Um, just didn't have the time. Uh, you know, been busy all summer long. Actually been busy since uh, probably last May. Uh, six, seven days a week, 10, 12 hours a day. Um, yes, I own a weld shop. Uh, but, you know, when you have jobs that uh, pay money for other customers, um, you got to do them. Those take priority over over doing jobs for yourself. Um, we actually have a stove, you know, in the house, a wood-burning stove that uh, was built back in the early 80s. Um, my grandparents uh, built it and put it in. Um, actually, a pretty neat thing. It uh, uh, he had it built with a water jacket on it and uh, the, the house is heated from uh, radiant, uh, basically water, you know, baseboard type uh, pipes running around the, the baseboards in each one of the rooms and uh, there's a boiler down the basement that uh, actually runs off fuel oil and pumps the hot water up through the house and, and heats it. Um, so years ago, he had a wood burning stove made with a water jacket on top of it and he had his water lines plumbed into that and he could uh, throw valves to bypass the, uh, the boiler and run the water over top of the hot stove and down the side of it uh, which in turn done the same thing that the boiler did um, unfortunately uh, when he passed away um, to keep the insurance on the farm, uh, they basically, you know, asked us a bunch of questions and we told them that there was a, uh, wood burning stove down the basement. Um, unbeknownst to us, my grandfather had never told them that. Um, and rightfully so because the stove was not manufactured by somebody like this particular stove and therefore didn't have a little some kind of stupid tag that has to be on it um, and the insurance company said that if we used it they wouldn't insure us so I kept it down there as an emergency type thing if we if we you know absolutely had to use it we would use it um, but I'll tell you, last year, paying uh, about $1,400, maybe $1,500 to heat this house in the coldest part of the winter for three months with fuel oil, um, I made up my mind this last spring that I wasn't going to do that uh, again this year. And I really wanted to put a, put a wood boiler out here. Um, but like I said, I just didn't have the time. So, we bought this thing. Um, I don't know if I can get it open or not. <laughs> bought this thing. Uh, you know, Lily stoves, at least around here, have a big name. Um, you know, they, they've built stoves for years. They, they make good stoves. Um, my plan is, is you can see the vents up there on top, uh, the blower motors in the box right there, and it mounts on the back of it, which I can show you. It mounts on the back of it right here. Hopefully the sun's not too bright. And then of course, forces air, you know, through some tubes that are that run through the inside of the uh, 
stove there and blows heat out the front. Now, my plan is, since this is going down the basement, um, we have a heat pump on the house, which, you know, obviously we use down to 35 degrees, 33 degrees, something like that. Now, after that, they really aren't worth anything as far as heat goes, and then that's when the boiler takes over and, and you know, you start burning up that high dollar fuel oil. Um, but with the heat pump, there's ductwork ran throughout the house. And it just so happens that where this is going to sit in the basement, I'm guessing I would need to make six to seven foot worth of duct work to come up off of these two vents. I'll actually make, fabricate a piece that'll sit down on top of that and blow the heat up through the duct work. Now, I'm not sure how good of a job it's gonna do, especially for the second floor. Um, <clears throat> I would imagine that you know, by the time the heat travels clear up to the second floor, it's not going to be real, real warm. But it's not a, that huge of a deal because we're not upstairs very much anyway. The main floor is what I'm concerned with and whether this thing will uh, pump enough heat to um, heat the entire house. I don't know. Um, I may have to upgrade it to a bigger blower, you know, it just all depends. Um, and then again, you know, the nice thing about the boiler is we've got three different thermostats in the house. Um, so maybe, you know, uh, the, on, the, on the lower floor uh, in part of the house, we'll use the boiler. Um, but you know, if we can if we can heat the house, the main part of the house with this, then uh, it's still going to save us a ton of money. Because, like I said, I mean, it, it was it was ridiculous last year, and and fuel oil's more this year. Uh, the most I paid for it last year was uh, two ninety five or two ninety eight a gallon. Um, I called up there to order some uh, last week. It's three fifty five a gallon this year. Um, it's just ridiculous. Um, you know, I, I paid $950 for this stove. Uh, you know, that's a pretty good chunk of money. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I've got 70 some acres of woods uh, between our property here and our other property, you know, about three quarters of a mile from here. You know, outside of some time and gas and oil for the chainsaw, you know, there, there's no reason that that I need to be paying three dollars and fifty-five cents a gallon for fuel oil, you know, all winter long, or at least through the coldest part of the winter. Um, so I just made the decision. I was going to go ahead and buy it, and. You know, we're gonna put it in tomorrow. We're gonna to take the old one out that's down the basement. I actually take it down to my shop and uh, install it down there. Um, use it for a heat source down at the shop this winter. Um, and just see how it all works. I mean, I know, you know, nothing ever goes perfect right from the get-go. Um, you know, there, there, you know, maybe some modifications and things that I have to make, but at the end of the day, I think that, uh, that you know uh, I'll be satisfied with this purchase and yet get another project sort of that I had planned for this year taken care of um, you know like I said I wanted to make an outdoor boiler and I still think that I may uh, attempt to do that may even try to do it this winter um, I doubt that I'd be able to get it installed this you know before next spring or summer but uh, Damon, if you're watching this video, um, if if I can get the time to do it, and it's looking like I am going to, I will uh, definitely shoot some video of us making it. Um, hopefully, enough 
information that uh, that you can get an idea of, of what we're doing and, and what needs to be done but until then uh, this little deal right here is hopefully gonna at least help us offset our our heating cost this year um, and make things a little more <laughs> I want to take their straps off but make things a little more cost effective I guess is the best way to say I had no idea that that this house cost my grandparents that much to heat um, you know my grandfather put the boiler system in years and years ago when one of the most cost effective ways to heat your house was with fuel oil um, and just never changed it uh, he did add the heat pump here probably seven or eight years ago and, and that definitely helps I mean uh, it's not a real warm heat uh, once you get down to 40 degrees I've noticed you know anything below that I mean yeah it, it's it's heat but it's not a real warm heat and you know really for Ohio they're not really you know they're great air conditioning units um, and they're great to supplement your heat, you know, in the high 30s and 40s, but uh, they're not they're not a viable heat system, you know, for Central Ohio. So anyway, I just wanted to get this done before uh, before it got dark here, and hopefully get it uploaded and put on there today or this evening here too. Talk to you later.